This is Amber Ewell and Kay Otto from Storm Lake St. Mary's monologue. For our interior monologue, we picked a picture from an anti-Trump rally held in Sioux City at West High School. We picked this picture because we each have read many articles, seen many news broadcasts, and heard many conversations about the racist comments and beliefs of some of the presidential candidates, particularly Donald Trump. Living and working in a very diverse community, the attitudes and statements that have been made have had an impact on some of our students and families. We felt by using this photograph for our monologue, we were able to gain a deeper understanding of the everyday lives of some of our students, how they feel, and how are, they are made to feel on a daily basis. By choosing this, we hope to be able to connect better with our students and to help bring awareness to the injustice that has been happening in our country, state, and town. This picture had several people in it, but we decided to focus on two women who were each holding signs. One sign reads, Mr. Hate, leave my state, and the other, support the DREAM Act, hard working. We chose these two women because we felt that the wording on their signs and their facial expressions were very telling of their inner feelings and thoughts. My name is Maria. I came from Mexico to live in America when I was a small child. I am currently a college student working hard to make a better life for myself and my family. Here is my story. America? What is America anyway? I thought it included life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Am I not allowed happiness because I was not born an American? How can you justify your discrimination when you don't even know what I have been through? Imagine you are living in a small village near the mountains, but the mountains don't protect you. The violence begins and people are getting murdered, decapitated. People are missing, and you hear they have been kidnapped or raped and left in the desert. Do you stay and wait to be next, or do you pack your family and move as quickly and as far away as you can to somewhere you hear is safe, where there is opportunity for a better life, where children can play in the streets and not be sold as slaves or worse? Doesn't everyone want a safe environment? I'm sure your parents have wanted the same for you. I wholeheartedly thank my parents for risking their lives in crossing the border so that my siblings and I are no longer living in a day-to-day -day fear of violence and murder. I am a respectful, responsible human being. I take care of my elders, currently my grandparents, while trying to make my way through college and hold down two jobs. I could see if I treated people differently, speaking poorly about women or the disabled and those that are different than I in other ways. Truth is, people are scared of what they don't understand and what is different than what they know. Today, the push is against those with different religions, different races, and different languages. Seems to me the same was true nearly 100 years ago when white hooded Americans thought they were supreme and horrific measures were taken to create an America for a single race. Even though there were still significant differences in cultural heritage, religions, and languages. In Germany, we watched as those against the Jewish committed incomprehensible crimes that were never to be forgotten. Has society not learned? Hate leads to ignorance, and ignorance to hate a circle I'd rather not be included in. My college education and educators encourage my bilingual identity. I can guarantee you I work harder to assimilate myself into the English language than most of you. But remember, being bilingual offers so many opportunities for those of us that are linguistically diverse today. In speaking two languages, I myself can bridge gaps in social, economic, and other communications. Research actually shows that there are several advantages to being bilingual, including the ability to learn new vocabulary easily, the ease of spotting word associations, ability to use information in new ways, problem-solving abilities, 
greater listening, and other communication skills. That is bilingualism with any two langu languages. Would you tell a deaf person who utilizes American Sign Language to speak in English? Did you ask your great-grandparents to do the same when they spoke in their native tongue? I'm not asking for you to treat me as though I am better than you. Either be respectful to me or leave me be. I don't care. I don't want to be your stomping ground when you are insecure about what is happening in your country, in your community, and in your own mind. I just want to be me and let you be you. I am Anna, a single mother of four who came from Latin America seeking a better life for my family. Here is my story. Send them all back, those wetbacks. Make them apply for a visa. They don't pay taxes. Speak in English. You are in America. All comments I've heard a hundred times over. Apply for a visa? I have applied for a visa. I've even applied for my citizenship. It takes time. Time that I didn't have when my family was not safe where we were. I am not a criminal. I have broken no American laws other than crossing the border to the United States. I have left my family, friends, and all that I know to come to a strange country where I am not only not welcome by the people who live here, but oftentimes I am not welcomed by those of my own culture in the United States either. You may understand why people outside of my culture do not welcome me. Pretty simple, huh? Some feel as though I should not be living in their country for a number of reasons. I took another American's job coming here. I don't pay taxes, and I don't even speak the language clearly or with ease. When in reality, not only can I alleviate your concerns about those myths in the upcoming information, but I can justify other reasoning for leaving my home. What I did not anticipate was the dissension by others of my own culture because of my educational goals and how hard I am willing to work to get to my goals. Oftentimes, interacting with those in my own culture can even be more of a fight because I work and graduated at the top of my class in high school, I am looked down upon. It is not acceptable to be an intelligent, hard-working Latina. Even with my aspirations and high level of ambition, I was and still am ineligible for acceptance into college because of my status and therefore work a 50-hour week as a pack rat. Working those hours allows me to take care of my family. It allows my children a home, a life, and a childhood that I was not allowed to have growing up in heinous circumstances. Remember that 50-hour week, slaughtering the food you eat? Do you want my job? How long would you last? I don't pay taxes. I not only pay each of my purchases, I pay taxes on them as well, just like you. I also have an ISN number with the federal government here in America. Some years I pay my taxes, and some years I receive a return, just like you. It is not due to my choice, but that of the American government, depending upon my income. Speak in English? I don't speak the same language as you. No, I don't, but I try. I work hard for my children to speak English fluently as well. My fifth grader recently won the National Geography Bee because she knew more about your country and what it has to offer than any of the other children that live here. This is an example of the knowledge and hard work factor that makes us less desirable to those of our own culture. My children and I reap the many benefits of being bilingual, and we strive to keep our culture alive just like I am sure your ancestors did when they came to America. Please respect that. We came here, my children and I, for safety, for a better life, for opportunity, for education, to work hard and make something of ourselves something those in my family before me could not provide. We traveled far and took great risks. Please accept us and allow us to make America our home. Pray for the DREAM Act to pass so that my children won't have to work as hard for the same privileges. Pray they receive a college education so that they can better themselves, their community, and our society as a whole. So please, the next time before you think or say one of these negative comments toward another human being, Try to put yourself in that person's shoes. You may not know their story or the struggles they have been through. Despite the color of our skin, we are all humans and have the same goals in mind, making a better life for ourselves 
and our families.